think that, oh, well, a person's a person and we all do the same, but actually there's huge variability and there's oftentimes not a lot of good ways to predict who is going to be a success and who is uh, going to have more difficulties. Younger people who are very fit sometimes have a harder time because they come into Colorado and want to hike a 14er and they just uh, try and sprint up and then you're getting in a situation of rapid ascent and those people even though they're young healthy could even be a marathon runner actually can develop more symptoms and problems more easily than someone who's older who might even be taking a slower time going up. If you aren't staying hydrated and, and are prone to being dehydrated uh, just because you don't drink a lot of fluids in general, that could lead, lead you to have problems. Situations where uh, you have some underlying health conditions can make, make you a little more prone to having difficulties with acclimatization. Someone with a severe anemia or low blood count, you know, just already doesn't have as much hemoglobin to help carry oxygen around, they might have more of a difficult time. Some people with chronic underlying uh, lung conditions, um, they just aren't able to bring oxygen into their body as well as someone who didn't have a chronic underlying lung condition. Someone with a chronic heart condition potentially could have that same situation as well, just because the heart isn't allowing the lungs to get as good of oxygen intake and they might have more difficulties as well. Another uh, kind of a health condition that might compromise you somewhat is if you've got a real bad cold or respiratory infection that might compromise your body's ability to bring oxygen in and, and might make you more prone to the effects of altitude. If you've had troubles before with acute mountain sickness or more severe symptoms, your chance of having that happen again is likely to, to be there. In that circumstance, then you're best taking even more time to try and acclimate and get your body in better shape over a slower period of time so that you have better success when you're at altitude again. One thing that your primary doctor can do is make sure that all your um, underlying health conditions are optimized as best as possible. So if you have underlying heart troubles, you're on a medication regimen that's going to make sure everything's working as best as possible. If you have underlying lung troubles, you've got a variety of uh, treatment strategies on board that let your lungs work as best as possible. If you've got some underlying anemia, maybe you've uh, taken some iron supplementation or other things like that that might help increase your blood count so you might have more success. There's also medications that your doctor may recommend you take prior to um, going to altitude that can help. A common one is uh, Diamox or Cetazolamide, which is basically a, a water pill that can kind of help um, adjust the acid-base status in our bloodstream and actually makes us breathe more effectively and can help minimize uh, potential for developing acute mountain sickness or even worsen symptoms like HAPE or HACE.